Good evening YouTube, it's Trevor here, Summit or Nothing. Tonight we are going to announce the winner of the One Tigress Evil Eye Stove, as well as answering a few questions sent in by yourselves. First of all, I'll just say it's been a while since I've been out. I did go out last week on a little walk, but it was that windy up on the cliffs. The audio was absolutely horrendous, so I haven't really done anything with that. Luckily, though, Nafe has given us loads of footage. Well, you've seen the videos, his new tent and vashon pack, and he's got some other videos to come. And in a couple of weeks, I'll, all the kids will be back at school, so I'll have more time to myself to make some of the videos that I've been intending. But for now, let's just go through some questions. So, I had quite a big response to this, actually. So, uh, Matt Wadham starts off, what's the worst piece of kit you still own? I've had time to think about this as well and I still haven't come up with an answer. I don't know, I've got so much stuff in there that I can't really remember what's in there. Not, not the best answer, Matt, sorry about that. <laughs> Zolvalor, would you do a video on the cheaper side of things, please? I only do videos on the cheaper side of things. <laughs> I've always been the budget one, Nafe's always sort of gone more expensive routes. But yeah, there will be more videos like that. Rambling on, how heavy is your bag when you packed for a wild camp, including your camera equipment? 12, 13 kilograms, sort of the heaviest these days, um, including camera equipment. It gets a bit lighter in the summer. And what recording gear would you really like to own? E.g. cameras, mics, drones, and tripods, etc. <sighs> See, I don't know what I want to own really. I'm happy with what I've got. I'm not one to race out and buy the new stuff, you know, like the, the new GoPro 9 for like X amount of money. I just make do with what I've got and what I'm using. Uh, I've got a drone, but it just, it's hassle taking it out and setting it up. I can't use it on Dartmoor anyway. When I'm on the coast, I don't really want to stop. If I stop and use the drone, it's like an hour out of my time, just titting around trying to get it up and running. Maybe my videos are lacking for it, but I think, I don't know. <laughs> Not very good at these answers, am I? I've fobbed off three questions so far. David Christensen. Keep doing budget kit reviews and compare versus high-end gear. Yeah, the trouble is I've got to fork out the high-end gear to do that. So that's, unless they send it my way, it's not really happening. Um, what five items would you buy again or recommend for wild, or recommend for wild camping that has impressed you since started out? Uh, Cloud Up 2, my Caramel backpack, Caramel Urban. It's not the lightest, but I've just really enjoyed that, having the three different compartments. And that was 20 quid, you know, always been my day pack. I've enjoyed my wood stoves, my Columbia Conspiracy trainers, I'd have bought them a long time before, and my Solomon boots. How's that? And he's also said, there's been a massive amount of excellent feedback over to Cathlon Gear. Do you own anything? And if you do, how was it? Uh, my backpack come f f from Decathlon, the 50 litre Kuracha. I've enjoyed using that. I struggled to get everything in it, but it's done, it served a purpose. I don't think it came with a rain cover either. I think I had to purchase a rain cover and it's not actually waterproof, so that was a bit of a shame. I've actually got Quercha, um hiking trousers. They're really comfortable, really lightweight. I did buy the down jacket after I'd done my review of the down jacket. Everyone said that the Cathlon down jacket is the best one. So I bought one of those. I bought it in the large, I always wear a large, and when it come, it's really tight, it's a lot smaller. So I should have sent it back, I've not sent it back. But what I did notice as well, there wasn't as many pockets in that. There wasn't like the zip, the chest pocket here where I like to keep my compass and what have you. So I think, you know, there's not a lot of difference between the Trespass and the Decathlon price, but I preferred the Trespass down jacket, if I'm honest. But apart from that, I haven't got a lot of Decathlon stuff. But what I have, it's been alright for the money, it's good. Ryan Keane, how do I stop shitting myself when I hear the slightest noise outside my tent? Yeah, I think you've just got to put it to the back of your head, to the back of your mind. You've got to be rational when things like that happen, haven't you? And just, it's like with any fear, like the fear of flying, when you go up in a plane and you're scared of flying, just think, you know, how many planes fly that year and never crash? How many times have you heard a sound outside your tent that's been something scary. Chances are nothing's gonna happen, you're gonna be fine. Just think like that. Ryan C, bonjourno, what hikes, trips have you planned for this year? Well, I haven't planned anything yet, Ryan. I can't wait to get out again, obviously, and I'd love to do some of the Peak District. I'd love to go back to the lakes in Snowdonia, the Brecon Beacons, 
but I really want to just finish the Southwest Coast path. Hopefully, I'll get a massive chunk of that done, if not finished this year. Welsh Warrior, what is your worst camping experience? I think when I took my son to Beavers camp for the weekend when we was when he was younger and it rained all weekend and I was going to do one night and my wife was going to do the next and she never she stood me up yeah that's pretty crap <laughs> uh, Tom and Joe vlogs any tips on how to pass a bit of time on a night whilst wild camping take a book take your phone take Netflix uh, in the summer I end up sat out sort of watching the stars if it's a nice evening during the winter obviously it's longer so yeah as long as you've got some entertainment there I always download films to my phone on Netflix. Gets me through an evening. Uh, Redfan72, have you ever heard an unexplainably weird experience whilst out on your adventures? Or seen or heard anything that freaked you or left you completely flummoxed and speechless? Sorry. No, I haven't. Joseph PMCL, what do you think about tents that pitch in a first? They're all right in the summer. Obviously, you'll. I prefer a tent that goes up together or goes up outer first. Yeah, a bit of an inconvenience, but the trouble is you, you can buy a tent for reasonable money. You can get tents that go up outer first or go up at the same time, so. Uh, Dale Hodgkinson, safety is important when hiking, wild camping. What measures do you take to stay safe in general? With things like your Dartmoor in a day trip, do you give your family updates an itinerary of where you should be? Yeah, when I done the Dartmoor in a day, I did sort of message my wife for every sort of point across the moor. So always let someone know when you're going out, isn't it? And yeah, every now and again, I will send a photo of a screenshot of my view range or something like that. Redfan72, I know it seems a long way off, but do you plan any trips to other countries or have you been in the past? If so, what would be your dream hiking camping destination? I'd love to just get up some bigger mountains. We've done Romania, the Carpathians in Romania, went up to Omo Peak. I'd love to go back there again. Um, that was stunning. There's a link to the video here if you haven't already seen that. But yeah, I'd love to go out and see some of the Alps and I'd love to go to New Zealand again, do some New Zealand mountains. E everywhere and anywhere. And begin. This is the most important question, Trev. Will you, once we're allowed out to play again, be doing any Dartmoor Legends? I love it when you read us a bedtime story. I will, Anne. Especially what now Nate's kind of come back out with me. He loves them as well. If 2020, 2021 was a song, what song would it be? All Apologies by Nirvana? Ghost Town by The Specials? There's a kind of hush all over the world? I don't know. Uh, Keith Chapman, what are your thoughts regarding super lightweight and counting every gram? I'm all for weight saving, but I'm not that. I'm not that anal about it, to be honest. I know Nave likes to sort of watch all the grams and things, which I don't understand, because he's the one with the muscles, yet he's the one who complains the most. Um, yeah, I'm not that bothered about it. I understand that there's no need to carry extremely heavy stuff when you can get lighter. Of course, it's, it's not as hard work when you're not carrying as heavy a gear, but you know, I'd rather be comfortable than have a lighter pack. Josh. How many times have you called Dartmoor Rescue? None yet, touch wood. And any chance of a sneaky camp at Oakhampton Castle? I was thinking that myself, maybe one day. Peter Davis Yates, who would you like to collaborate with and any plans to do wild camp in the Peak District? Yeah, I haven't got anyone specifically that I want to collaborate with. There's, you know, a fair few people that I wouldn't mind going out with and people who, whose channel I watch and I think, yeah, nice people I wouldn't mind sharing their company um, and like the areas that certain people live in I'd like to go and see that Alan Metal Man in the Lake District and Josh in Snowdonia it's great to have guides so yeah just see what happens if time money travel was not a problem what is the one mountain in the world you would like to hike with your current skill level I don't know if there's an easy way up it I wouldn't go rock climbing up the north face of it, but I've always wanted to see the Eiger. So I don't know whether there's like a, an, an alternative route up that you can just hike up, or if there's mountain ranges around it, but I'd love to set my eyes upon the Eiger. And if money was no object, what would be the one kit, bit of kit that you would like to purchase? I used to think it was like the Hubba Hubba tent, but I'm not that bothered about sort of forking out for expensive kit when I've got stuff that sort of does it all right. If I was camping on the Alps and things, maybe then I'd like to get a Hilleberg tent or something a bit more substantial. 
but I'm not that type of person who like, oh, I'd love to have the most expensive of everything. Because knowing my luck, I buy something expensive and like an expensive tent and then snag it or something and rip it, you know? I'm really not bothered. And if you could play the lead role in any film, past or present, what would it be? Probably more suited to your other channel. Yes, we've got a film podcast channel now. We need to talk about movies, podcast. That's the full title. Um, Chief Bodie and Jaws, perhaps. Uh, Happy Camper. If you could only wild camp in one area for the rest of your life, where would it be and why? <sighs> I wouldn't like to choose just one area. Um, but if I had to, I'd guess the Lake District. Uh, Chris Reese, plan for any multi-day hikes? I hope so, Chris. Yeah, I'd like I said earlier, I'd like to do some more of the coast path and I'd like to start taking on bigger track, a bit, you know, bigger hikes with sort of camps in between. So yes, hopefully this year we'll start to do some. The Poor Unfortunate Souls. Are you going to be Big Spoon or Little Spoon in, in Betsy? <laughs> yeah, I think it's, uh, I think there's two beds, one's up in the roof and one's down on the floor. So I'll probably be down on the floor. Hot air rises, doesn't it? I don't want Nafe's high protein diet raising to me. Nick Forsyth, would you or both you and Nafe consider going to do a hike and wild camp in the Alps or the Black Forest in Germany as future content for the channel? Yeah, I am not adverse to doing anything like that, you know. This channel has shown me that if anything, this is all about experiences and yeah, I'm open to all these experiences in future. Skater burn, how do you deal with number twos? If you need to go, uh, you dig a pit, you do it in a hole and you bury it over. Always take a shovel. Timoy tickets, just for you, I'll give you a demonstration. Ginge, summit to see. What is the similarity of Ionian major and Aeolian minor? One's quite high up in the in the army ranks and one works under the ground pulling out resources is that right uh, lc what was your inspiration that first got you interested in wild camping in the uk just spending a lot of time on dartmoor we started hiking on dartmoor and then all of a sudden we got that sort of urge to want to get out and camp there. Nath was the one who kept saying oh we should camp, we should camp and I wasn't really interested but the more time we spent out in the middle of Dartmoor the more I thought it would be cool to camp here. The rest as they say is history. Colin Brown, how old are you? How dare you? 32, 41. Um, pre preacher Bear, how do I know if my mate or some beauty owe Owen on my text? Uh, Rob Mackins, my question is, where do flies go in winter? Usually like in the side of window frames. They crawl into the cracks and crevices of window frames. I know. And my other question is, what kit don't you own that you would love to have? I don't know, I sort of answered this one earlier. Um, I just sort of get ideas as I'm looking for stuff. I go, oh, that looks good. I'll try that out. At the moment, I've got everything I sort of need. So it's just testing things for the channel, really. So, sorry, rubbish at answering that. Hello, Trev, we were wondering, it's T and Valhalla, by the way, Kerry and Kat. We were wondering what to date has been your proudest hiking camping moment, i.e. that first long hike or overcoming a fear or doubt. The mountains in Romania was one of my proudest moments. And also walking Dartmoor in a day I guess those two have been my key moments. Uh, backpacking Cape Breton. You and Nafe have any plans to, to one day jump the pond and come for a hiking trip in Canada post COVID? We have both talked about Canada. Um, but yeah, lots of places in the world we'd like to see, so maybe one day. If we can rake some sort of better cash in that's, uh, you know, that can afford us the time away from our normal lives without leaving a big wageless pit then yeah we'll be up for anything Roxfoot worst movies to watch before wild camping solo predator or the evil deads one or two um well i watched i mentioned it in one of the videos before i watched zodiac the night before i went out yeah that left me on edge uh, boiled egg said dog soldiers never seen dog soldiers i guess american wealth in london would have scared me once but these things don't scare me anymore. 
What was your favourite Timoy tickets? What was your favourite thing about your trip to Romania? Just getting up to the top of the Omu Peak. A couple years ago we went to Germany and went up Zugspitz, the tallest mountain in Germany which we'd gone up in a cable car and then to get up the top of Omu Peak during the winter hiking through all that snow being up above the clouds and being only a couple of meters away from the height of Zugspitz a real great moment that whole trip was great to be fair Darren Goff where are good safe places to park on Dartmoor when leaving your vehicle for an overnight camp I don't know where the safest places are but I mean we this Dartmoor's a big place it depends where you're camping just look for little parking spaces in that area. They're all on the map. Um, Danny Perryman, what's your favorite area of Dartmoor and why? Quite like the Merivale area. There's a lot of sort of handsome looking tours around there. And as I said, for beginners, it's perfect. Uh, but I think the Northmoor is just great. Uh, yes Tour, High Willays, you know, out to Steeperton Tour. Then over again, you've got great links and yeah, the Northmoor. Chris Bennett, after lockdown is over, would you consider organising a group wild camp on Dartmoor? Well, that's a sort of a perk to my patrons. Um, so eventually there's three tiers of patrons and the top tiers are eventually, we've done one sort of group hike where we draw a handful of names out and we're going to do some camps as well once we're sort of allowed. So that's, you know, that is a Patreon benefit. Uh, the thing is you can't take a lot of people with you on Dartmoor you're not only supposed to sort of have two or three people camping at once you're supposed to be discreet but then you know I do some charity hikes where we've had 20 or so people come in hiking with us so I'd love to do some more of those as well raise some money for charities so you can watch out for that sort of thing Chris Mally D's TV a bit of a daft one but has anyone ever had a go at you for shouting summit or nothing those big summits get full in the UK. Yeah, well, no, but then we don't shout it if there's too many people around. Um, and it got to be something that we sort of try not to do too much of anyway. But yeah, we've not really shouted it from any of the big peaks, too, too embarrassed. Barry Duncan, do you generally ever get a good kip when camping? Surprisingly, yeah, the last couple of times I've gone out. Last year, I slept better than any other years, and I think it all put it down to the two roll mats that I've been using. The UL80 was a good one, really comfortable, but also the the OEX roll mat that I had was a really sort of comfortable roll mat, made all the difference. Lee Price, as a newbie, how do I choose the correct pot size and stove to ensure I don't carry more weight than I need to? I got a 750 Lixada pot and I thought that might be too small, but to be honest, if you're boiling food in that, probably go a little bit bigger, a litre perhaps. Just get the Jobworth stove. 20 quid off Planet X bikes, I think. It's not very pricey. You get a good idea of the size and the weight, but I think that's sort of a good size to start with, especially if you're on your own. Sky Picks, what do you think about tarps, tarp setups? I think I need to try some more. I was gonna do that last year, get out in the afternoon, just messing about in the garden with the tarp, never did. Northern Images Photography, socks and how to keep your feet warm. I always work, take spare socks and during the nights when I'm camping, I'll just double up, I'll put another pair of socks on. Kieran Kinsella, what is the story behind the Hag Films channel? That was basically our first channel, we just used to make videos, films and that, titting about. And I'm, now you know I'm putting my podcast over there only because it's already monetized and it's just sat there dormant. That's it. Uh, Sam, any plans to do woodland camps or maybe coastal with some fishing? Yes, I would love to do fishing. I don't actually eat fish. Um, but yeah, I will be doing some more coastal camping. As I said, I'll be doing stretches of the coast path. I have purchased myself and Nathan some budget hammocks that I saw and I thought they look really cheap but the reviews looked brilliant. So we've bought some to give it a test. So yeah, hopefully we'll get out and do some hammock camping in the woods as well. And the Feral Scots, are trespass sales where items have an RIP of two grand, but reduced to one pound 50 genuine? Oh, they're bound to be. It is, it's the case, isn't it? You go into trespass and it's always like, oh, this product's 39.99 again. It says it's down from 200. But it said that last year and it's <laughs> it's always says it. So Neil Gerlin, 
When watching other YouTube vids, they always promote their merchandise that they can purchase. Why don't you plug your site more? Uh, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not that bothered. If you want to buy some stuff, I mean, they come up on the bottom and I've put a tag in the video descriptions of every video. If you want to buy it, buy it. I'm not, I'm not touting. <laughs> it's up to you lot. That's all the questions. Well done, thank you for asking me them. Hope you've enjoyed this. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Who's gonna win the one Tigress? Let's have a look. Uh, I've gotta bring up my comment picker. Now I've gotta find the video. So I've found that. I've gotta get the URL, copy, paste that in. Filter comments based on a specific, specific text. I want that stove. We're getting YouTube comments, 293 comments. Now, start the raffle and pick a random winner. Bulldog Badger. Well done, buddy. So there you go, Bulldog Badger. Please email me at info at summitonnothing.co.uk. Send us your address and I will send you the one tiger stove. Thank you everyone for watching. I will try and get together something else for another giveaway next month. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all soon. Cheers, boys!